Okay, hey, this is Brent Leary, and with me right now is Mike Katz. Mike Katz is the EVP of T-Mobile for Business. Thank you for joining me, man. Hey, thanks for having me, Brent. It's great to be here. So I was reading the kind of the announcement you have with this partnership with Microsoft and what you're doing, and we're going to ask you to explain that and kind of describe what's going on there. But it was really interesting as I was reading this press release, you said, or the press release said, this is probably the most important national small business week in a decade. And it just struck me. I, I hadn't seen it like phrased like that. So maybe you could just tell me what, what do you think that means? Why is this one so important to small businesses this time around? Yeah. You know, it's a great question. I, this, this has been a, you know, maybe to put it mildly, a challenging year for all of us. You know, it's, it's, this is that probably, and hopefully cross your fingers, this is the one time in our lifetimes where simultaneously all of us, everyone in the entire world is going through the same thing together. Uh, and it's been hard and it's been stressful. And it, 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 there's not a single one of us who haven't had some impact on our lives. But if you think about how this pandemic has affected small businesses, it, you, can, you can make a strong argument that they've been disproportionately impacted. You know, especially, you know, if you go, if you go back to the, to the spring, when many, uh, many of us ac across the country were in full shutdowns, um, you know, sm small businesses, uh, you know, rarely can afford uh, to keep the day, uh, the doors closed for a day, let alone weeks or month months on end. And, uh, you know, I know you've seen some of the statistics. I mean, the, the number of small businesses that have not been able to make it through this pandemic is, is alarming. You know, I, I've, I've read things as, as many as 50% uh, of, uh, you know, our 25 or 30 million small businesses in America aren't going to make it through the through this pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, it's been it's been devastating for small businesses. And I think it's really important, you know, as uh, communities that we, we come together to, to help our, our, sm our small businesses, because they you know, I know it sounds cliche, but they really are the backbone of this country. So as you get into talking about this it's an announcement that you have with what you guys are doing with Microsoft. Just talk a little bit about what uh, small business means to T-Mobile, and then we'll get into all the other cool things. Uh, you know, small, small business, uh, they're, they're incredibly important to us. Um, you know, we, we serve millions and millions of small businesses today, you know, and mobile because it's, uh, it, it's become one of the most important technologies in small business. Uh, the partnership that we have with small businesses, uh, the, the, the importance, I think, is reciprocal, you know, because we, we're providing them with a the technology that many small businesses are using literally to run their business. Um, so they're, they're incredibly important to us. And we, and we work with small businesses um, you know, acro across the country and across all of our different channels. Um, you know, I, I have a team uh, that, that, that goes out and directly into the, this, the uh, locations of small businesses and works with them. Uh, not only to sell them services, but set up their services. And then now that we're combined with Sprint, we have over 7,500 retail locations across the country. Um, and a huge portion of the daily traffic that we see inside of our retail stores uh, are small businesses, either owners of small businesses or uh, key decision makers inside small businesses. And so we, um, you know, a lot of our daily work across this entire company uh, is is with is with and supporting small businesses. So they're uh, they're an incredibly important part of our company, and you know we we uh, you know we think that small businesses rely heavily on the the types of services that we support them with. So since it is coming up on National Small Business Week, and you just explain the importance of small business to T-Mobile, let's talk about this partnership that you just announced with Microsoft. Yeah, we are. We're really thrilled about this one because, you know, like like we, we were just talking about, it's, it's been a rough year for small businesses and, um, you know, small businesses all, already uh, oftentimes are the underdog. You know, they you know, they're, you know, d depending on the, the business and the industry they're in, they could be fighting, you know, some of the biggest companies in the world are competing, maybe not fighting, but competing with some of the biggest companies in the world uh, and oftentimes don't have uh, access to the same kinds of resources. You know, many, many small businesses that we work with, you know, they don't have big IT departments and, you know, they don't have, um, you know, their own help desk that, that's, that's helping uh, the, the people that work there with all their different technology needs. And one of the things that we've really tried to do with small businesses is 
keep what we do as simple as possible. Because you know, business owners of all sizes, but particularly small businesses, they, they've got more stuff to worry about than dealing with their wireless company. Um, and so for us, it's always started with having a very, very simple and very transparent proposition to them, you know, which is we have one rate plan, it's completely unlimited services, uh, and everything's included. So, uh, you, you know, small businesses don't have to worry about signing up for a rate plan uh, or signing up for service, uh, having an expectation that they're going to pay X and then get a bill for Y. Um, you know, we don't we want we don't want small businesses to have to stress over and, you know, have to review their cell phone bill every month. We want them to focus on the things that they need to do to grow their business. So we've always had a strong principle of let's keep it extraordinarily simple uh, and easy and transparent for small businesses so they can focus on what's important, which is running their business. And that's why this excitement, this uh, announcement with Microsoft is so exciting, because, um, you yeah, know, we we wanted to make sure that in as part of our proposition to businesses, we could deliver as much value to them as possible. You know, we could take the wireless service that they're already counting on us for and, you know, give them either the opportunity to offset costs that they already incur today in their business um, or give them access to capabilities and technology that, you know, maybe they, um, you know, either couldn't afford or didn't have uh, the internal tech, uh, technical competence to, to bring into their organization. And so what we've done with Microsoft is we've enabled every every small business that does business with us uh, the ability to get access to free Microsoft 365 licenses. Uh, and so small businesses can take advantage of all of the suite of applications that Microsoft 365 uh, has within, within its suite. So, you know, Excel, PowerPoint, the, the kinds of productivity tools that many businesses rely on to run their day to day operations, uh, but also some other great features like cloud storage that you know enables document sharing and uh, in storage of documents. So we're really, really excited. We think this this is going to be something that small businesses um, it feel like is really helpful to them, both both in their productivity, but also in their cost management. Uh, Bill, uh, cost management, productivity, ease of use. I mean, and with with the pandemic, particularly everything the ex is kind of accelerated when, it, when you thought about digital transformation and you think about how Overnight, everybody had to stop going to stores and start buying stuff online. So everything is just moving so quickly, uh, you know, to, you know, the cloud in, in, in a variety of ways. Um, but let me talk, ask you, what are you hearing from your customers? What are the kind of concerns that they have specifically around, you know, what's going on, you know, with trying to stay in business, with trying to, you know, stay connected with customers and, and just trying to keep afloat, basically? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, there's some things that we've heard that have been consistent and, and, and the feedback also has evolved over the course of, of the pandemic. You know, I think in the early uh, days, weeks and month, months of the pandemic, it really was, uh, I don't have a better way to put it, it was, it was triage. It was, hey, look, like our operation is shut down. Uh, we have no revenue coming in uh, and we need to figure out ways to uh, pay the bills and keep uh, our employees, um, you know, whenever possible, safe, secure, and employed. And that, that was one of the things that like, I, I was just blown away with, with some of, some of the small businesses that we worked with, which, which was how much of their efforts, particularly early in the pandemic, were about ways that they could keep themselves focused on making sure they didn't have to lay people off. That, that um, many of these small businesses are family-run operations, uh, their employees either are family or treated like family, and they wanted to find ways to make sure that they didn't have, uh, you know, th they weren't the cause of a negative impact to the people that work for them. Um, so I think I think in these in the early days of the pandemic, it really was about you know, how can we ensure that uh, you know we can we can prioritize the, the things that are the most critical for us uh, and really limit spend uh, where where we can. And so we, we got a lot of feedback from, from customers about, you know, was, was there ways to defer, either defer their bill? Um, could they limit the, the amount of services that they were buying from us? You know, maybe, maybe they, there was customers that were buying, you know, fully unlimited services from us, but they recognized that, you know, business was going to be either completely shut down or slowed down for a while. Uh, so they, they wanted to adjust services uh, accordingly, which then uh, consequently saved them, saved them money. Uh, so it was a lot of that kind of, uh, I'll call it optimization or, or uh, um, you know, uh, kind of shifting around to services to meet, uh, you know, to help them meet their 
short-term financial objectives, but also to right size relative to what was going on in their business. Um, you know, and then I, I think uh, as, you know, the pandemic kind of became our normal, you know, we, we got a lot of feedback around how can we operate successfully in this, in this new environment? And I, I can tell you, it really spurred uh, a huge wave of innovation. And you, you were just mentioning things like digital transformation and how do, how do you take a, you know, like a restaurant that's, that's completely brick and mortar and their businesses, you know, stuffing people inside of a building and, and then stuffing them with food. Um, how, do you, how do you shift your business model to one that looks like that, to one that can work in, in this environment now where people have to stay socially distanced and safe? And, you know, a lot of the conversations that we started having with customers were, how can we use mobile to facilitate some, some of the, some of this new, new way that our business can operate? And we saw some really great examples. There, there's a restaurant, I'm in Seattle, a uh, restaurant here in Seattle called Canlis, which is kind of like an institution restaurant in, in Seattle. Um, it's like the only place, like Seattle's kind of a laid back city, you know, you have like the start of grunge music and stuff. It's the only place in Seattle where you actually are required to wear a jacket when you, when you dine. There. <laughs> um, but they, uh, obviously the place that, you know, it was shut down May, March, March, April, completely shut down. And they went through a massive shift in their business model to go from a fine dining, sit down restaurant, uh, with, you know, a professional wait, wait staff and, you know, and chefs, uh, to one where they transformed their entire wait staff into delivery drivers. Uh, and they wow. equipped all of them with, uh, phones and tablets. Uh, they, they created a, a mobile POS system that they could use to take orders. Uh, but they kept their entire wait staff employed by turning them into delivery drivers, uh, and, and turn their entire business mobile. And, uh, it's been, um, it's been a great success story, both for them, but also for their community, for the local community, because uh, they haven't had to lay off a single person. They even, they even took the, the piano player that plays inside the restaurant and they, and they created like uh, essentially like a podcast with them every week. So people can listen to uh, live piano music from the piano player at the restaurant. It's just been, it's just been incredible. And there's so many, so many of those stories of innovation, uh, you know, of people that were in desperate times who, who, who went through this incredible transformation to keep their businesses afloat and to keep their employees employed. Well, there's some great examples and, and it's great to see that innovation and talk a little bit about, I mean, all these kind of things that are taking place, uh, you know, having to uh, work from home and having to collaborate and all across and then, you know, separate locations and the requirements around, you know, access, you know, broadband or wireless, and then we're, you know, we we've been hearing about five G for a while, and so where do, where does five G fit in, and how can do you think five G can help, uh, particularly in uh, situations like we're in today? Yeah, I mean it's it's a pretty exciting time in this in this industry, and obviously, like you know, uh, you know, we're, we can geek out on on this on this kind of stuff because we we live it every day, but we really are uh, in 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 the in the beginning stages of what I think will be one of the biggest technology transformations in wireless. And I, you know, I think that's saying quite a bit because if you think about wireless a decade ago, uh, when, when the industry went from, if you remember 3G into 4G, uh, that was a huge transformation. Uh, that was the era of smartphones. You know, 10, 10 years ago, you never would have thought of, you know, pulling up an application and punching, uh, you know, you know pu punching a button and having a stranger show up in a car. Um, and you just think about all of the innovation and, and capabilities and reliance that people now have on their smartphone as a result from this, this, the trans, uh, this the technology transformation from 3G services into 4G services, which really unleashed the power of smartphones. Um, this transformation from 4G into 5G has the potential to be even bigger. Um, the, the ingredients, uh, the kinds of capabilities that, that 5G uh, promises to present uh, really can be transformational. You're, you're talking about things like uh, today, the average mobile network in America runs at, you know, 30 to 40 megabits per second download speeds. Uh, you're talking about uh, speeds in just in the next couple of years with 5G that on average are 10 times higher than that. You know, you know, three, 400 megabits per second with peak speeds over a gigabit per second. So mobile networks that have the same or better capabilities than what people are used to in their traditional fixed line, you know, home or business broadband. Um, latency, network latency, you know, it, one of the things 
that you know all of us who have been living on video conferences over over the last few months uh, recognize how important latency is and on an, on an internet connection because uh, how many times have you like had these experiences where you're in a meeting or even even a one-on-one -on -one and everybody's talking over each other you know and that and that's and that you know that's really an effective latency and how responsive uh, your your ISP is uh, you're going to see dramatic uh, decreases in latency with with 5G. And I think that will really improve current experiences like the one that we're having right now. Um, but it also is going to, I think, be a catalyst for the uh, invention of a whole bunch of new experiences. Um, you know, and and you, you kind of hear all these bu these buzzy things about virtual reality and augmented reality. But th those things become a real possibility with a high capacity, uh, high bandwidth, low latency network, you know, where you, where you can have experiences in a virtual or augmented environment that feel natural because, you know, because they don't, they don't, they don't carry the latency. So I, I think there's a lot of ingredients for, for big transformation. I, I think the near term thing, um, especially for, for small businesses, that's going to be interesting uh, is the displacement of traditional uh, either IT services or traditional services that were delivered exclusively through fixed wireless or excuse me, fixed wired uh, providers mm -hmm. that can now come through the wireless network. You know, so think about things like just even your broadband connection, you know, being able to get that from a, a, a wireless company rather than a wired company, which uh, the immediate benefit is competition, because in, in the broadband space, uh, more than 50 percent of Americans and businesses only have one choice or less in broadband. Uh, and that means higher prices and, you know, maybe sometimes trade off with experience. So I think that would be some of the near term benefit um, are services like uh, like fixed broadband. Uh, that can, that where there'll be more choice and competition, and, and that means better services and better pricing for consumers. So, I see that helping tremendously when it comes to creating the kind of experiences that some of these experiences, traditional uh, interaction with customers, are, have been high touch, quote unquote. Uh, that's going, you know, to a certain extent, that's going away. So you can actually start to create maybe just as uh, rich experiences but just differently because of this kind of broadband you know wireless broadband that will be at our disposal sometime in the near future yeah i i think i think so and i and i i also think um it, improving experiences like again like i i think COVID has taught us a little bit that you know in most places we can be fairly productive in a in in a telecommuting uh, or video conferencing environment but it hasn't been perfect um, and, there, and there are places I know within, within our business, there's, there's things um, that are just a lot easier to do where you can be a lot more productive if you're physically there because there are limitations to what you can do, can do on video. Um, I'm really optimistic that uh, this kind of environment, tele teleconferencing, video conferencing, is one that could be greatly, greatly evolved with, with 5G, where, where you have more realistic uh, experiences where telepresence feels more real, you know, including things like we're working with a, a startup company right now that does um, 3D holographic uh, uh, images inside uh, inside of a teleconference. Uh, so it actually feels like you're there. It feels like something like out of Star Wars or Star Trek. But um, yeah, you, you can you can see the um, you know how how something like that, especially you know in today where we're uh, you know talking to everybody in two dimensions, how that how that potentially could be valuable. And I think those those kinds of capabilities especially again especially for small businesses have potentially big long-term benefits even after we get out out of covid because you know you think about the cost and expense of travel today i mean that's a that's a huge uh, that's a huge line item for for small business if they if they can uh, you know, take a lot of their their commerce activities that that required airline or car travel before that can save money uh, it can save carbon going into the atmosphere it can it can save lives like you know the uh, number one, you know, one of the leading cause of death still is car accidents. If people can, you know, do a lot of these interactions yeah, through through teleconference, then I think it's got impacts um, across the board, but but especially with with uh, you know small businesses. Wow, I mean, this that's a lot to look for. <laughs> a lot of possibilities uh, for particularly small businesses to do things that they maybe hadn't even thought about being able to do before. I mean, going beyond like like you're saying, there's a, a definitely a cost. A savings component like you know i i've gotten used to traveling 
20, 30 times a, a year to go to conferences. Um, now they're all virtual and, and they, they seem to be getting better and better as, as the, as the folks putting on these conferences kind of, you know, take advantage of what they could do virtually other than just try to port over the physical, you know, the, kind of the physical experience and try to just, you know, bring that some of the things you just can't do. Um, but there are things that you definitely could do differently and can be pretty interesting um, by taking adva advantage of, you know, what virtual, you know, technologies can do. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I think small businesses really stand the, the you know, the benefit maybe more than uh, more than most because of that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I think technologies like this end, end up being big equalizers for small business. You know, yeah. if, if you have the ability to do commerce uh, uh, wherever you want, from wherever you want, uh, that that becomes a big um, a big way to compete against scale. And, you know, I, th I think that I'm excited about the kinds of tools that could be unlocked. Look, with 5G, the stuff that's really going to define 5G hasn't been invented yet, which is also another thing that's excited about it. But I'm optimistic the kinds of things that can get invented uh, can really help small businesses uh, with with things like like scale deficits that they have to their big competitors. Um, and teleconferencing, I think, is just one example. Man, this has been a great conversation with Mike Katz from T-Mobile. And I Tell us where again where they can find out more about the you know what you're currently doing with the Microsoft partnership, and you know what else they should be on the lookout for coming from you guys. Yeah, um, yeah, I think the the best way uh, to get all the information about it is is visit our website, which is business.t-mobile.com, uh, and you can see everything that we're doing for businesses, including all the details about about what we're doing with Microsoft. Um, hey, look, like you know, we've got we've got a lot of uh, stuff that we are currently doing and working on for, for businesses of all sizes, including small business. Uh, but I think one of the most exciting things uh, is, uh, as you know, Brent, we, we recently just closed our uh, acquisition of Sprint. And we are in the process with this acquisition in building uh, what, what is going to be uh, undoubtedly the, the best 5G network in America. And we just talked about all the benefits, benefits of 5G. But I think the really... Uh, cool thing, especially for small businesses, is uh, in wireless for years, businesses have always had to make a choice between, do I go pick the provider that's got the best network, or do I go pick the provider that has the best price? And those have been, those have been trade-offs that people have had to make. And one of the things that we're really excited about, and that this Sprint, this combination with Sprint enables us to do is businesses aren't going to have to make that choice anymore. Uh, T-Mobile, without, without question, is going to have the best 5G network. We have it today, and we have a sustained advantage relative to our competitors uh, in 5G. Again, mo a lot because of the assets that came to us as part of the Sprint deal. Um, you know, and it's a network that's going to have so much capacity uh, that we're going to be able to sell it at a, at a great price, a, pr a price that's far more competitive than what our competitors do. Uh, so now you you actually can get the best network at, at the best price, uh, which I think, you know, especially based on all the challenges that we talked about a second ago, the small businesses are facing is hopefully that I, something I think uh, the small businesses find really exciting. Um, and if that's not good enough on top of it, you know, we uh, really have defined this company by service. Uh, you know, we we have a, a culture at T-Mobile uh, that is based on our obsession with experience that customers get. And one of the things that we do uh, as part of our proposition to every business customer is we give them a service called a uh, dedicated team of experts. And so if they've got a problem or they need help with something, uh, they, they call us, uh, they can call us from their phone and their call doesn't go to a robot. It doesn't go to an IVR. They don't have to like figure out which number to press to actually talk to a human. It goes straight to a person and it goes straight to uh, usually the same person every time somebody that already knows you, knows your business, um, and you don't go through like that Groundhog Day experience where you have to re-explain all your problems again. Uh, it goes to the same person or the small same team of people that all work together physically in the same space. Um, and so we can build a relationship with you. We can get to know you. Uh, and we can make sure, more importantly, for businesses, if you've got an issue, we can solve it quickly so you can get back focused on the things that are most important for you. Man, this has been a great time talking with Mike Katz and and I'd just like to say he lives in Seattle, but he's not a Seahawks fan, folks. So. <laughs>
I can appreciate that. Yeah. You can't say that too loudly because I'm like in the office <laughs> and people might hear that. Don't worry about those people. That's okay. <laughs> but thanks again for the time, man. This has been great. Yeah. Hey, Brent, thank you so much for having me. And then uh, I really, really enjoy your program. So thanks. Thanks for everything that you're doing. Okay.